Good morning and welcome to Sun Up. I'm Kathy Shelton filling in for Clinton Griffiths this morning. Normally this time of year we'd be telling you to get out in your fields and top dress your winter wheat. Well, as you can see in this field and like many other fields across the state of Oklahoma, it's a little wet out there. But as Sun Up's Austin Moore reports, once everything dries up, you're still going to have a small window of opportunity to get that nitrogen on the ground. The cold and rain have driven us back inside and unfortunately it's done the same for a lot of producers across the state who right about now are looking to put some nitrogen down in their wheat fields. Here to talk about that is Brian Arnell. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? How are these producers sitting right now? How, long, how much time do they have to get that nitrogen down? We would really like to see it go out right now and already be out, but unfortunately, like you said, with the weather, we're statewide wet. But it's not as big of a hurry as some people are afraid of. We've had a lot of research at OSU that's shown that we can wait till Holostem and recover completely from any nitrogen deficiencies that occurred throughout the season as long as it's been relatively good pre plant amount applied and good stand occurring. And honestly, we can actually even wait a little bit longer. We can wait all the way up to flag leaf or a little bit before flag leaf will fly that fertilizer if needed. But we start losing by running over that wheat, especially we're using some ground rigs we're going to lose by running over it and trampling down wheat. So we'd like to see nitrogen get on before Holostem. And right now we're getting really close to Holostem. I'm afraid when this weather warms up, it's just going to be a few days, just like Dr. Edwards has said several times, we're going to be in Holostem pretty quickly. So it, it's not the, the wheat's not going to use that nitrogen, it's that mechanical, the, the, the wheel's trampling over, you're going to hurt the wheat and it's not going to be able yeah. to recover. We're going to, if we start running over the top of wheat after Holostem, we're going to start trampling down wheat and we're start, going to start hurting it. But if you have really bad deficiencies, it's probably worth your while to get out there after Holostem and apply. You have to remember though, once we get near flag leaf, we start converting some of that nitrogen to protein. Once we get to flag leaf, we're putting most of it into protein and less into yield. So we need to try to get it on as soon after flag, uh, soon after Holostem as we can. Okay. Now for producers getting nervous about this, as fields are really wet, what are some other options you can look at? Aerial application, for instance? We, we, can, that... we can always look at aerial applications and we can look at uh, even some of our large spray rigs. But what you have to keep in mind is the cost of the product you're spraying and what value you're getting out of it. If we look at just some average economics, most of our liquid products are going to contain about three pounds of nitrogen per gallon. That three pounds of nitrogen on average will get us at most at 100% efficiency 2.35 bushels. That's saying that we have about one and one and a third pound of nitrogen per bushel and it takes that and unfortunately none of our fertilizers are 100% efficient. But at 2.35 bushels that you can get out of a gallon if we look at four dollar wheat that's saying we're, we're going to need we can make nine dollars for every gallon we apply. If you're looking at, at applying two gallons, that might be $18 we can make. But if our application exceeds that, our cost of product plus cost of application exceeds that $9, right. there's no reason even why to look at it. So you've really got to be careful about those numbers to make sure that you're, you're not just throwing we, money away. We've got to make sure because some of the products out there, while they are efficient and they're good, we're going to cost more than that if you look at the application cost. Absolutely. Now, of course, if we're talking about nitrogen application, we're going to talk about enriched yep. strips. We're going to talk about enriched right, strips, absolutely. absolutely. So if they're out there now, though, you say you've got to be a little patient in reading the strips mm -hmm. this year. We, we need to be patient this year after our freeze. Most of the state took some sort of cosmetic damage on their wheat with that freeze that happened back in January. You know, we had that yellowing, and in most cases we would recover by now. We need about two weeks of regrowth from our past, uh, past freeze damage. I don't know if much of the state has had a two full week window or even added together additive of two weeks of growth yet. Right. It's been that time, but it hasn't been good growth. It's been that time. We've had several weeks after that freeze, but we haven't had the growth. Basically what you're looking at, you want a lot of that damaged tissue to be gone. The wheat have grown past that. It's very similar to grazing on enriched strips. We like to see two weeks of regrowth after the cattle's been pulled. So we'd ideally like to see two weeks of regrowth after that last freeze event occurred. And we've seen a lot of enriched strips out there that did not take that cosmetic damage and they can be used right now. We do have growth, especially our southwest part of the state. We're seeing a lot of enriched strips show up. The nice thing about an enriched strip is you don't have to have a green seeker sensor to get your recommendation. If that enriched strip starts showing up in your field right now, you know you're behind. And so that's one of the things we've been promoting with it out there, whether you want to use a sensor or not. Having an enriched strip is such a good, better management practice. Because right now, all these guys that are afraid that they're behind because the fields are too wet, they would know as a matter of fact whether they were or not if they had an enriched strip out in their field. And it could give them some level of satisfaction knowing that I am behind or I have plenty of nitrogen right now. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Thank you, Austin. Let's hope for some drier weather. Absolutely. A little bit warmer.